Specialty Academy. I'm your host, Bryce Gregory, Product Manager for Transportation and Specialty Products. Today we'll be discussing how to properly charge your RV batteries. Some good tools to have when owning an RV are a voltmeter and a battery charger that's designed for the batteries and size bank that you have. Additionally, having access to your technical or owner's manual for your battery can offer some additional benefits. The number one thing to do to help maintain and your, the charge on your RV batteries is to turn off the battery disconnect when not in use. Now, you need to understand what not in use means. When you disconnect the battery switch on your camper RV, you may be disconnecting it from its charging source. So unless you have a secondary charger that's attached to that battery and plugged into the grid, using the disconnect switch will disconnect it from its charging so you want to make sure your battery is fully charged before you do that. It's a good idea to use a multi-stage charger that plugs into your AC system and connects to your batteries even, even when the camper is stored for a short period. So fully charging the batteries disconnected from the camper is certainly the best practice. You can use the power supply or the charger built into the RV to charge your batteries and that is completely acceptable. With the power supply and or a separate charger you want to make sure that that power supply or charger is configured for the types of batteries you use. AGM and gel batteries have distinctly different settings than flood, flooded batteries and some of those settings are defined in your technical manual or owner's manual. On occasion you want to be sure to check over your charging equipment and make sure it has good connections, good clean connections, and you also want to make sure you don't overcharge your batteries with it. So one thing to do is to make sure that that charging equipment is set up properly for the batteries that you have. One way to do that is that with TPPL or AGM batteries or gel batteries, you will want to make sure if there is a configuration switch, it's set to that configuration. When selecting a charger or charging system, which could include solar, you want to make sure that that charging system has the capability to charge up the batteries that you want to use in the amount of time that you have. So if you can only run a generator or use it or, or, or using sunlight, uh, you might only have 8 to 10 hours a day of charging time. You want to make sure that that system can charge up the amount of energy you use overnight during that window. So you want to make sure the capability and power capacity of that system is appropriately sized. The absolute minimum charging rate that you should be using for AGM TPPL batteries is about 10% of the amp hour capacity. So a 100 amp hour battery would require about 10 amps as a minimum to charge it. So a fully discharged battery can take about 10, amp, 10 hours to recharge at these minimum rates of just the bulk rate portion. Looking at the ch multi-stage charge rate chart, you ideally want to have another 8 hours of absorption charging to maximize uh, your charging and getting your get your battery back to its initially initial fully charged uh, state of charge. Um, this doesn't necessarily need to be done every cycle, but should be done regularly and certainly after using for an extended period. So for your reference, I've provided uh, a couple charts here based on our performance and extreme series and numbers of batteries uh, that you could possibly be putting on your camper um, in parallel. So based on the performance ser series battery group 31, uh, four batteries in parallel, you may need a charger as big as 35 amps to meet the minimum requirements, which means you probably should be using at least a 40 amp charger. As a final note, series configurations require more considerations, but they're not very common. Some people with solar systems will use 
uh, series systems up to 48 volts, but that energy will need to be converted to be able to use in your 12 volt system camper unless you were um, reconfiguring, rewiring your lights, etc. in your camper. Generally, you're going to be outputting 12 volts and have a 12 volt battery bank to work with that. So, um, but in series systems, which occasionally does exist in a camper, two 6 volt batteries in series, you want to make sure that those batteries are identi identical types, uh, essentially identical age, and uh, can be, they'll need to be checked individually. And our technical and user manual does go through more details on these series configurations. So please check that out at odysseybattery.com. You can reach us with questions at odysseybattery.com. Feel free to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you'd like to post one of your projects to our community, you can do so on Facebook or Instagram. And please add the hashtag MyOdyssey. Thank you for your time, and please enjoy your next camping excursion.